Hello, Powerhouse fans. We are here for our last run of the night with Paul Saltine running Cheeky Cheeky Boys Any Percent. them with bombs which i just did there you can just hit it hit it hit it and the hit will register right away but the dragon for some reason if you hit multiple bombs in a row it doesn't register any damage so you kind of have the weight there and then we're going through a very quick uh bonus stage here where you get a bunch of money and then you gotta take out these four uh dudes that kind of i I call them Pickle Ricks. They kind of look like walking pickles. And what we're going to do here is we're going to buy our sword upgrade and as many bombs as possible and then go to round three. So in this stage, what we're going to do is with our one bomb, we got a little mini boss fight here gonna throw the bomb and hope that that kills him right away and it does that's a pretty good bomb shot and we're just gonna keep going so okay a little difference here between what i'm gonna call a marathon run that i'm doing right now and what i would normally do if i were trying to do a pv paced run right now i have zero bombs if I were to take an intentional death here, I would respawn with five bombs and I could I could defeat this boss fairly quickly. However, this game is fairly lenient with, you know, uh, health and whatnot. That being said, though, if you die once, you know, you respawn and it's no big deal. If you die again, 
it's game over and you know your your run's over. Hey, uh Paul. So, yes. Uh when you get a second after you finish this boss, we'd like to ask you to uh give us a run back. Um we apologize our audio wasn't uh up to <laughs> snuff. Uh, oh. I do apologize for getting to you this late. Also, stream can't hear me. If you'd like to explain to them what happened, uh, I do apologize. Oh, that's no problem. No problem. That actually gave us a chance for better bomb lock. Hey guys, we're uh, we just finished this boss. We are actually going to restart uh, to take care of those audio issues. Which gives us actually a good chance to get uh, better money RNG in the first stage. Uh, because when we finished the first stage there, we only had enough money to buy one bomb, which makes the boss fight a bit long. So hopefully now we get a little bit better luck and then we can purchase two bombs after the first stage. On the flip side, we could actually end up not having enough money for any bombs, which would really suck. But the chances of that happening is pretty slim. Um, but we're, we're going to try to give you the, the best possible experience here. So we're going to start this over and hopefully yeah, um, audio quick, is a bit uh, better now. Chat, now are we okay? Everybody? Yeah, so I do apologize, um, guys. This is real quick, uh, 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 now stream can hear me. So um, I do apologize, guys. This is your restreamer, uh, Shane quick, Kill speaking. I'm going to, change, uh, um, I'm going to throw us back to our setup screen real quick, and I'm going to change uh, how we're doing our capture. It'll take me probably about a max of three to four minutes, and then we'll bring you back with Paul Saltine. I do apologize for the interruption. That's entirely on us. We'll do our best to uh, be back.
Hello everyone, sorry for those audio issues, but we are back now and we will have Paul Saltine running Cheeky Cheeky Boys any percent. Oh, oh, let's go guys. We got a, another chance here to get slightly better RNG in the first stage. Guys, I'm Paul Saltine, this is Cheeky Cheeky Boys, action platformer for the Sega Genesis. I'm just going to jump right on in. Give a countdown from three to start the timer, guys, and we'll go also right into team, this is Cheeky Cheeky Boys, action platformer for the Sega Genesis. I'm just going to jump right on in. Give a countdown from three to start the timer, and we'll go right into stage two. Three, two, one, go. Round two. Let's go, guys. So... The reason, yeah, the reason, as I was saying before, uh, that we go to this stage first is because there's a lot of money in this stage, and we kind of want to get enough to buy a sword upgrade very early in the game. And we also want to buy as many bombs as possible. This stage is going to give us the best opportunity to do that right away. All right, I'll try to be 26% cheek here. Uh, no promises, though. It's like 1 a.m., I'll try my best. So, every coin that we pick up has a chance of being a times two multiplier, like that one right there. So instead of 500, it was a thousand dollars. We're gonna go back and fight the two-headed dragon again. Like I was saying before, uh, hardest, probably one of the hardest bosses in the game, just because his hitbox is so strange. And you can't really spam this boss with bombs like you do with all the others in the game. If you try to shoot him with bombs two times in a row, the second hit won't register, so you kind of got to wait. And here we go. Already, we're through the first boss. We're going to go into the mini uh, bonus stage here again. So we're going to collect all the coins except for one. If you collect all the coins in this stage, you kind of get a uh, health refill, and then there's like a a whole thing where it congratulates you and all that, and it wastes about five seconds. And sadly, we actually got worse RNG on the money this time. But we end up coming out with the same number of bombs, so it's okay. And we'll use it on this mini boss right here. And he did not go into that bomb at all. So what you're kind of hoping for, because his pattern is completely random, you're kind of hoping that he jumps into your bomb shot multiple times, and it takes out a bunch of his health. He did not do that this time, unlike last time, so that's a bit of a time loss. No big deal, though. But uh, like last time, we are going to take it marathon safe here. Um, we are not going to intentionally kill ourselves to get a, uh, a bomb refill. Uh, just because it, where it is so risky where you never do buy back a continue at any point in the game when you're basically one death away from game overing. It's perfectly fine if you're, you know, doing a PB run or you're, you know, you're going for a PB. During a marathon is not safe because you can die at any point. The game is fairly forgiving, but it can also be pretty trolly at certain points. So we're just going to play it safe. So you don't see the, the game over screen at any point. We're just going to take the extra minute to beat this boss right here. And we'll save our continue in case we get really trolled later on in the game. And there you go. Grab the key, grab the money, and get through the door. So we'll buy as many bombs as possible, that is apparently only one bomb. And then we'll go to the first stage. 
So this is meant to be like the introductory stage to the game. And we're going to come up on a mini boss right here that actually if we throw a bomb at the right time, which we just did, we can take care of the first phase real quick in one bomb shot. And we can just sort. Oh, he's trolling us. Look at that. Get down here. Okay. So normally you just kind of sort him while he's down at the bottom. He never jumps up or anything like that. But he uh, he's feeling a little frisky tonight. That's fine. It's a Friday night. I get that. We're just going to damage boost for this lava here so we don't have to wait for the platform. And we're going to come up on a very RNG heavy boss just up ahead here. I like to call him uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. So he is essentially a rock. For the first phase, he can only attack uh, when he comes out of the ground. And you have to take out of both his hands first before you can attack his body. You can see that he doesn't really want to come out of the ground to let us attack his hand. We got both of them done now so we can attack his body. And I'm going to save that bomb. Just in case we need it later, we're going to grab the money and the key, and we're done the first three stages already. So at this point, we're going to buy as many bombs as possible, which is only four, which is okay. So at this point, the game becomes a little more linear. We don't have a selection of which stage we do anymore. It's very straightforward from here on out. Uh, there are five more sections to go. At this point now, we're going to start seeing how overpowered the bomb is when you're playing as the Red Twin. Because when it comes to the, uh, the rest of the boss fights in this game, you can essentially take them out in no problem whatsoever with the, uh, with the bombs that we have here. So... When you're playing this game, you can play as either the red twin, which we do for the any percent run, or the blue twin. I'll explain that in a second. We're gonna have a, a refight here of the dragon, and we can get a skip here that saves about 10 seconds, and we got it. There we go. So basically, what happens with that skip is uh, you do enough damage to the uh, dragon while it's off screen, and then you throw a bomb. And it kills it while it's off screen and it completely eliminates the uh, the dying cycle, the dying animation. It saves about 10 to 12 seconds. You smell the rock is cooking? Yeah. Uh, most times he's not cooking anything good. It's mostly he's just cooking trollage, but... Uh... And he wasn't too kind to us back then either. It is what it is. So this guy here is going to throw out some more Pickle Ricks and then these less looking Pickle Ricks here. I think they're meant to be like nuts or something. And now here, the power of the bomb. It's going to take three bomb shots to kill this guy and we're going to do it in no time. One, two, three, and he's dead. Collect the money in the scroll and we're out of here. So the bombs with the Red Twin are very overpowered. So yeah, the, the Red Twin has a higher magic damage and the Blue Twin has a higher physical damage. But it turns out that the, uh, the magic power for this game with the Red Twin is so overpowered that it's the preferred choice for any percent. It is a bit quicker than playing with the sword as the Blue Twin. And we have our first mini boss here. It is the fight of our last underwater mini boss. One bomb, and then we will sword him down the rest of the way. So with this guy, we want to kill him as close to the ground as possible. Because if you kill him up on the top, the ground doesn't fall apart and let you continue until his sprite hits the ground. 
So if he's near the top of the screen, it takes like three to four seconds for him to drop. Second mini boss coming, we're gonna do two bombs and one sword shot should kill him. Easy stuff. So one thing you're gonna notice is that whenever I'm shooting off a bomb, I'm uh, either I'm banking it usually off a wall or some or like the edge of the screen. The reason for that being is that if you kind of just throw a bomb into the middle of the room, it sort of just sits there and does nothing for a while until it explodes. But if you bank it off a wall or the edge of the screen, it explodes right away. So that saves a bit of time. Scorpion boss, three bombs like before and it's done. Oh, just, just wait for luck. We only have enough money for four bombs, but there is an extra bomb up here that we can get. Because we're going to need a full suite of bombs for this stage. We're coming up on my uh, favorite boss fight of the game. It's a cool skeleton, dude. Okay, so we're gonna get easily get one bomb shot off on this guy. Two if we're lucky. He can block the second one. There's one. And he blocked the second one. Of course he did. We're gonna sword this guy. He's gonna lose his trousers from time to time. You can't do damage to him when he's parrying or attacking. And he's being a little frisky tonight, I see. Very frisky, actually. We might end up taking our... a death right here. So it's very lucky that we didn't... Uh, that we didn't... Uh, take our uh, intended death earlier, because that probably would have really sucked. But now we're in a bit of a conundrum here. We're short on money, and by dying, we now got sent back to the bad bombs. So there are several different bombs in this game. The magic ball is the best one, the one that we were using. But well, since we died, we've now got really bad bombs. That's going to make this boss here a bit of a pain in the butt. He's only vulnerable when he flashes you like that. And what we'll do is we'll take it safe. We'll hold on to that last bomb. All right. Okay. Not the stage we were looking for there. Uh, dying really does suck. Because we also lose a bunch of money. So we're going to grab all of that. Buy back our bombs, buy back our health. And we have a bit of an auto scroller here now, so... I'll, I'll throw this one back to the host. If we have any donations, you can read them now. If not, um, promote charity. We can promote upcoming incentives, anything like that. So uh, take it away. All right. We do not have any new donations, but I would just like to remind everyone that we are raising money for the Extra Life Foundation, which unites gamers all over the world to raise money for a good cause. Hospitals all over the world can benefit from your donations. So we'd really appreciate if you could donate. Thank you. Sounds good. I will uh, get my personal donation in. Uh, if not after this run, I, I mean, I'll probably go to bed after this run, but I will get it in over the weekend. So basically, at this point, we are just... 
uh, trying to make our way to the top here uh, without taking too much damage. There is a uh, a red pill which fills up all of your health just up here, so it's no big deal. Uh, we do want to have full health going into the next section. We still have the bad bombs. Normally this boss fight, if you have the good bombs, it takes like two seconds. Uh, unfortunately, we're stuck with the bad bombs right now. Thanks to that death, so we're going to continue onward. So one thing that I haven't mentioned about the fairies yet is if you have full health, they have a 50-50 chance of dropping you a bomb. If you have, if you don't have full health, they will give you a bit of health. And we've actually just got two 50-50 bomb drops from the fairies, which is really good. However, we since we do have the bad bombs... Um, it's not really going to do us much good, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. And the second bomb actually did no damage. That's interesting. So this guy, I like to call him Men at Work. He has two phases. He's probably the hardest boss in the game. Two, his second bomb did no damage as well. That's cool. So this is like, actually not great. Normally you don't want to sword this guy's second phase at all because three bombs will take care of it right away. We'll take it. We're getting close to the end of the game here now. One more stage. What we're going to do is we're going to buy full suite of bombs. We still got the bad bombs. Which means the, uh, the final boss is going to be a real treat to fight. Uh, but beforehand, we got a bit of a climbing section. No big deal. There can be a bit of lag in this section right here, depending on how many sprites are on screen. That was pretty good. I'm going to go into the boss room here. I'm going to get a uh, talk to this fairy, get a little bit of health. And we got one more fairy right here who actually gives us a hint about getting the good ending for the game, which I'm actually going to sacrifice about five seconds to get. Because um, I, I meant to do this for another marathon and completely forgot about it in the heat of the moment. So we're going to do it here now. We're going to get the good ending. It's about five seconds longer than normally the any percent. So the final boss here, he's going to throw out a minion. We're going to bomb him twice and we're going to sword him down. And then this guy is going to do his best Ganon impression. Where he's going to teleport around the room. So normally with this guy, if you have the good bombs, it's three of the bomb uh, shots and one sword swing. And you can see if you don't have the good bombs or you don't have any bombs, how long this fight can be. Very long, in fact. Sometimes he can uh, go off screen like that. It is a huge time loss. God, it takes so long. Jeez. There we go. So 
We were given the hint. The key is under his chair. So I'm going to keep swinging at his chair here. And we got the key. Let's go. Okay. So he's going to do his best explodey here. I'm going to wait for him to drop some money and the final scroll. I'm going to talk some trash while he dies, of course. Gotta go down swinging, right? So it's not... We're not done yet. We're not done yet. It's a little bit more. A little bit more left of the game. So now we're going to do our best uh, Super Metroid impression here. We're going to have to escape the exploding castle slash end stage. I'm going to try to not open up any chests or anything like that. Because uh, the added coin sprites actually like really lags down this section. You can lose a bunch of... S Bunch of seconds to lag. I just opened up a chest there accidentally. But I grabbed the coins to try to reduce the lag as much as possible. And away we go. So uh, Princess Peach and this mountain goat is going to take us back home here now. We have been gifted, once again, the good bombs, which is great. Uh, there are no animals to kill, unfortunately. Uh, but one thing really strange, the game actually does give us this weird section here where we can collect a bunch of money, despite the fact that we can't actually spend money on anything else in the game. So this is purely for high score. So they're going to drop us back home, and what we're going to do is we're going to jump off the ship and take damage. That's going to actually save us a bit of time by uh, skipping a jumping animation. And then look who it is. It's our uh, final boss back for a little bit more. But no big deal. Oh, we don't have the good bombs. Never mind. We'll just bomb the crap out of them, and... We'll get the second Dragon Eye, and time. Uh, flashing light warning coming up for the best ending. Uh, if you have an issue with, like, pulsating flashing lights, uh, don't look. But peace has been restored to this land once again. Two dragon eyes let a dragon out, and evil has been vanquished. Uh, that, honestly, that was not a great run. Dying really hurt us. I put us over estimate, I think. But, uh, that's cheeky cheeky, boys. Honestly, it's a, it's a fairly easy game if you want to sit down and play it. Uh, doesn't take very long to learn if you want to speed run it. And uh, soundtrack's great, the animation's great, the graphics are great. It's just, it's a great game. It's a great game. And honestly, I think with that, I'm gonna toss it back over to the host to blew up night one of Powerhouse August. Guys, thank you very much for having me. I absolutely appreciate it uh, and thank you for being able to be flexible with the schedule i know i was scheduled to do this on sunday i kind of forgot that i was traveling so you know what thank thank you very much guys i absolutely appreciate it and uh best of luck for the rest of the marathon i will be watching good night everybody all right Yes, thank you very much, Paul, and to all of the runners we've had throughout the day today, and thank you to all the runners in advance for the runs for the rest of the marathon. So tomorrow morning, we kick off with Puyo Puyo Sun by Arcania DQ, and or he's going to be commentating, I believe. It's late. There's four people listed. Oh, maybe it's a race, because there's four people listed under the player category. Anyway... We kick off tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, and 
3 p.m. in British summertime, I believe that is. Uh, then after that, we're gonna have a Stuart Little, Monster Tail, Great Morning lined up for you. And again, that starts at 10 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. I believe that, that is it for me. Uh, everyone, have a good night. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you donating and watching again for the rest of the marathon.